Hi, uh, this is the uh, May 16th meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. Welcome everyone. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, Wintrow. Here. Housh. Here. Sims. Here. Hempfling. Here. Uh, Mary Ann McQueen is out of the country at this time. Also present is Village Manager Patty Bates, Assistant Village Manager Melissa Van Zandt, and Chief of Police Dave Hale. Our uh, solicitor, uh, Chris Connard, is also present. Well, we've got quite an esteemed group here. Um, the first item on the agenda under announcements is Owen Gustafson and Mia Campbell to discuss accessibility project information. And I know that uh, a few of us attended the, um, uh, at Mills Lawn, the uh, exhibition night. Yes, yep. thank you. And we saw this project that these two had done, and it's excellent, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from them. Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah. It was, um, uh, this was a PBL project that we did about wheelchair accessibility, and Owen and Mia were the drivers on this, wanting to know what was accessible in our town. Mm -hmm. So we checked out uh, Xenia Avenue. That was our focus because uh, we had a limited amount of time, so we had to limit it to the street with the most businesses. So if anybody wants to look at their PowerPoint, this is a hard copy of it. Um, their driving question was, how can we as members of the Yellow Springs community educate ourselves and others about wheelchair accessibility in downtown Yellow Springs? So I'm going to give the mic to the kids because they have some things to say about it. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Owen, and we are in me. Hi, I'm Owen, and this is Mia Campbell, and we are here to talk to you about our PBL project. So our PBL is on wheelchair accessibility in downtown Yellow Springs. 50% uh, and only 22 of the stores are accessible. So me and Mia made a map. The blue means a So at the end of this, we are going to give this to you. Okay. So blue means that the wheelchair accessible is Okay, for 50% of the stores and 50 per red is 50% not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but I don't know. Hi, um, I'm Mia yeah, because. Uh, I can't get in the toy store because I stopped smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mom. <laughs> um, because I can't get in the toy store because it has scales. So, the two crosswalks in front of the Mills Lawn School, they have like a lip to get up. And when I used to be in Boy Scouts, we always took the one that is right next by the church. So I had to go through the gravel and get in like the wheelchair accessibility entrance. So, there aren't any wheelchair accessible on the other side of the, uh, like, have you ever noticed like the uh, lip next to um next to the bank driveway? Yeah, that's not wheelchair accessible. So we sent you a letter, and you guys replied. Well, Judy replied, and she said that you guys will be help helpful and build one for us. Mm -hmm. So thanks for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and we. Yeah, I think that's all. Uh, nope. Wait. Um, I just want to say that you guys sending a letter to them was really a thrill. 
they were so excited to get that letter and to know that people were listening to some of the issues that they had. So thank you so much. Well, thank and you. I, and I want to say that not only did we listen about the one that you asked for, which is is um, opposite the one that the, that's at the school now. Yeah, right beside the uh, Ben driveway. Right. Um, so they're going to be putting one in there, but Judy also noticed that there's not one down at the south entrance to the school, and so they're going to put one there too before they, before they leave town. And it was perfect timing because we had the contractor here doing the sidewalks and stuff. So, and This is an important issue, I and mean, this is an issue we've been talking about for a long time. When we first started the sidewalk project, we actually did the first section from uh, limestone down to um, Allen Street, uh, not, actually not to Allen, but to, to Herman, and that was all based upon accessibility. It was actually um, to get the, to provide accessibility from Friends Care Center. <clears throat> so we've been working on that. The, the, the lips in the, in the sidewalks are, are difficult, or the, the, the raises when, um, from tree limbs and things are, are difficult for anybody to maneuver, let alone a wheelchair. Um, and now all of our new um, ramps, all of the new intersections will have the, the wheelchair ramps, which makes it much easier. Mm -hmm. um, the downtown businesses, it can be pretty tough. I mean, some of, those, some of those businesses, it would be virtually impossible for them to provide the kind of accommodations, the kind of ramp and accommodations that would be necessary um, for, to make it truly um, wheelchair accessible. I think that um, something that was mentioned to me and that we actually had looked into, some of the merchants had looked into, was a, a portable ramp. And I think that that is a really great idea. Um, it could be something that, that uh, some of the merchants could, could invest in to make it a little bit easier to, to go up a small rise. So, and a lot of changes have been made. Um, Emporium has added um, wheelchair accessibility and, and all of the new businesses have to are required to provide it so we really appreciate it and um, we'll pass along we're glad we can do what we can what we need to do to help yeah I also want to say I really enjoyed exhibition night uh, there were a lot of great things but one thing I learned was that we could even have that uh, accordion ramp be something that could be shared with different businesses so um, I think that's a great suggestion and something that uh, we, we can definitely pass along. Um, the accordion ramp was my dad's idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and there might be some accordion ramps that are full width. The ones I've seen so far are track ramps, mm -hmm. which might be fine for portable chairs, but if you if someone's being pushed in a wheelchair, it does kind of put the pusher in the middle of the tracks. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I do want to add is, as we've been thinking about, you know, fixing sidewalks all around the village, one of the things that we're definitely uh, aware of is the importance of accessibility. And so there are a lot of requirements that, uh, or some requirements that we want to make sure to follow as we keep on improving the village. I, I just wanted to say, I, this is the second uh, group of young people, little group this time, but a uh, bigger group uh, before, they came to the village council to tell us what they're thinking about, what they care about, and it's, uh, it's very inspiring to see young people engage, you know, in this democratic process and have the uh, self-confidence to speak to, in this kind of a setting, to adults who are sitting up in a little high rise here. Uh, looking kind of scary <laughs> maybe yeah. so I'm very impressed I really appreciate it and I think you both spoke very well excellent yeah thank you all thanks guys <laughs> Karen uh, uh -huh. oh um, <clears throat> I'm only gonna be on council probably for one, for one, one more year but uh, I did attend a presentation at Mills Lawn, which was which was excellent, and and even if I leave council, I'll continue to follow this this issue, because I I believe there are a number of different ways that merchants can accommodate uh, wheelchairs. Excellent. 
Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Thank you. And how many more weeks or days of school? Are you counting uh, weeks or are you counting days? Uh, seven counting tomorrow, I think. Seven days? <laughs> seven days is all? Wow. Uh -huh. And the pool is going to be open. When will the pool be open, Patty? The Next weekend. Great. Yep. So Yellow Springs <laughs> will be ready for your summer fun. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good so work. Much. and. Bye. Who is this teacher? Is she the teacher? Yeah. What's her name? Thanks. That's great. Are you going to leave that for us? Thank Thanks, you. guys. And make sure to employ it when we're trying to have some for the rest of the town. We will. We'll talk to them. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> All right. Bye. See you guys. So, let's see. I think we can go again. Um, Next item in the agenda is the cons uh, I have a few more announcements. Oh, announcements. We're not done with announcements. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I wanted to remind everyone about the, uh, the food truck that brings the fresh produce and bread, um, which is coming to the village on the fourth Tuesdays right here at the uh, Bryan Center parking lot. And that is from 1 to 2 p.m. So that's going to be, uh, a, I guess, a week from tomorrow, right? Correct. Yes. Correct. Um, so always the fourth Tuesday. We also, uh, you know, this has been mentioned a couple times. Oh, uh, the uh, mobile mammography van is going to be here on Friday, May 27th. Um, so giving uh, free mammograms. Under yeah, it, if, you, they'll take your insurance, and if you ha if you don't have insurance. Um, they will have some grant funding available, and you just tell them when you call to make your appointment that you don't have insurance. Okay. And they'll use grant funding. So. And where can they get the phone number for that? Uh, it's on the flyer that's right outside, and I believe Diana is also perhaps doing a story in this week's paper about it. Okay. Um, and then I actually wanted to thank Judy and Ruth Ann for doing some additional work on the website. So just so everyone knows. The drop-down menu now has all our commissions, so our co commissions can now start developing their uh, pages. Well, that is all Ruth Ann, just saying. All right, <laughs> you guys did a great job. And uh, the Little Art Theater is hosting this Wednesday a community conversation, and this is about uh, what was formerly known as the AIDS Resource Center, which is now rebranded as Equitas Health. And their tagline is care for all, trying to think about uh, respectful health care for, for all people. Um, so this is a free event, and uh, I encourage everybody to join from 6 to 8. And finally, it's Bike to Work Week, which is dear and near to me. So I encourage everybody to uh, bike and walk to work. Anyone else? Okay. And um, if anybody's interested, there is a new brochure now available called Blacks and Yellow Springs, a history um, that was developed by the 365 Project. And it's been a long time coming, and a lot of people had a lot of work, did a lot of work on this, and it's excellent. So it's, uh, and there are going to be two um, historic tours this summer, one in July and one in August, I think on the third either the third Saturday or Sunday, I'll have more information, that's, that are going to focus on um, Blacks and Yellow Springs history. So um, we're excited about that. Uh, any announcements from you? OK, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, minutes of May 2nd regular meeting and the financials for April. Do I have a motion for approval? So Wait moved. a minute. So moved. We can't, we can't oh. approve them. There's only two of us that were here. Uh, <laughs> You can move to adopt the minutes. Okay. Okay. So a motion to adopt the minutes and financials. So move. Second. All those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. 
uh, review of the agenda. Um, one item that I would, um, one of the items that was in the petitions and communications, the um, uh, letter from Eric Oberg uh, re regarding the bicycle enhancement request, I would like to move that to new business, if that's okay. And we also have an additional resolution, resolution 2016-29, um, another resolution related to the annexation of the Glen. Anything else that we wanna change on the agenda? Okay. Um, Brian, do you wanna review petitions and communications? Yes, all right, so we had a couple thank yous. One of them from uh, Beth Bridgman, who uh, thanked Patty and Jason for uh, their efforts in supporting the Ohio, Ohio. Uh, Japanese, my accent is probably not very good, but uh, the Japanese experience that happened uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we also got a thank you to Officer Beam from uh, Hannah, Hannah Delamater. And uh, this was about uh, a friendly reminder to uh, that her uh, registration, vehicle registration had expired. Um, we already referred to the letter from the Active Transportation Committee, so we'll be talking about that uh, at, under new business. There was a letter from Laura Curlis uh, suggesting that we don't, uh, we shouldn't have any stop signs uh, on North College or South College. Um, and Actually, it was Livermore. Well, that we shouldn't well, have. Right, at, on Livermore, you're right. On Livermore at North College and South College. That uh, her opinion was that those stop signs are not needed. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. Um, we also had the mayor's monthly report. Pretty much business as usual. Um, there was, uh, from the Ohio EPA, the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Permit Program asking for public comment and uh, citizens have 30 days to make public comment uh, that started from, I believe the date was on the letter was May 18th, so until uh, mid-June. Um, we also had the minutes from MVRPC and Greene County uh, Regional Planning Commission and there was a, a note from Chief Hale. Uh, I guess we found a tear gas gun that was donated to the village in the 70s. We don't need it, and so we're gonna be giving that to the Xenia Police Department. And I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving into legislation, public hearings and legislation. We have the second reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2016-09, uh, title only, Judy. Yes, this is approving the form and authorizing the ex execution of Brown County Landfill Energy Schedule with American Municipal Power Incorporated. Can I have a motion, please? So, mm -hmm. second. <laughs> okay. Uh, Patty, would you uh, take this? This is an offering by Energy Development Incorporated, which um, is a company that works through AMP to sell um, interest in landfill gas projects. We already own um, interest in three landfill gas projects. This one is a new one that they're um, starting in Brown County, Ohio. Um, the Energy Board recommends that we participate in this and, and purchase the shares of this to help replace part of the, um, the uh, opening that was made in our portfolio when we realigned and sold our AFAC or Fremont project interest. Um, the one question that came up at the last meeting, Marianne had a concern uh, to make sure that we were keeping our RECs or our environmental credits, renewable energy credits. Um, and if you look at Exhibit C as that is part of that ordinance, that's how you maintain the control of your credits. So we will be, we will be keeping the RECs on this, um, on this participation in this Brown County landfill gas. Um, this is a 24-7 source of, uh, of energy, uh, so it's a steady source and it's, it's, very, it's a very good source to invest in. So, and Patty, regarding the RECs, do we then, we just hold on to them? We um, we're not gonna sell them? We're not any? gonna sell our RECs, we're gonna hold on to our RECs because um, if we hold on to our RECs from this and from the solar field when, when it gets uh, completed, we will, if we hold on to those and at the end of the, the PPA we want to buy the solar array, then the RECs could potentially help us to do that, mm -hmm. uh, get a better rate, get a better loan, offset some of the costs. Okay. Can I ask a question about section four? 
Uh, there's a statement here that um, AMP's not responsible for EDI's failure to perform. And I just wonder, is, is that just standard? It's because it's not an AMP project. I see. It, it, AMP is, it, the offering is simply coming through AMP to AMP partners. It is an EDI project, and the same as all of our other landfill gas. Okay. So what happens if they don't perform? Um, then we get a credit on our bill. That's what the 20% mm -hmm. reference? Okay, gotcha. Any other questions from Council? This is the second reading. I will open the public hearing for comment. Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to Council table. Judy, would you please call the roll? <coughs> yes, Hempley. Yes. Sims? Yes. Pouch? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Okay, next is the first reading of Ordinance 2016-10. Um, would you go ahead, well, I guess if you could read it by title, by what's on the agenda, um, in lieu of what's actually on the legislation itself. It's and a little bit I can more clear. Yes. All right, this is Ordinance 2016-10. This is amending Chapter 414.02, Section F12 of the Codified Ordinances of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting a new Chapter 414.02, Section F12, regarding the placement of a stop sign on Livermore at South College Street. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, this is, I came up, it actually, I think I first heard about it at the Wellness Center during one of my classes by one of my classmates. Um, it was brought up and apparently that same person found Naomi and mm -hmm. <laughs> suggested that uh, we move the stop sign from um, North College, uh, where it is on Livermore, to South College. Um, and I guess I do have a couple of questions is, so there will be two stop signs on we are we are removing the stop sign at, at the the two stop signs at, on Livermore at North College. There's one each way, and they will both come out. Then there will be one each way at South College, and a crosswalk. At which sec which part of South College? At Livermore and South College. But which side? On both sides. It'll be it'll be both. You'll have to stop both ways. Right. I understand that. Is there going to be a crosswalk? Are we going to? Yes. Are we going to? Door? Yeah. Okay. We're going to put a crosswalk. Okay. Um, and but why would you take the stop sign out at South at North College, North College at Livermore? Why would you take that stop sign out? In speaking with the chief Jason and also Reggie Stratton at at Antioch, um, we just all felt that it would become redundant. I mean, they're only two blocks apart, and you're going to. I'm stop. talking about why would did you say you would take? You're not talking about taking the one that's on, that's on North College. No, just okay, the just the one that's on, on the Livermore. ones that are on Livermore. Right. Okay. Essentially, South College will become a three-way stop, okay. and and North College will just be stopped on North College at Livermore. Okay. I mean, uh, what's the um, speed limit on? 25. All of our interior streets are 25. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess I, when, I, when Laura wrote the letter saying, do we really need a stop sign there at all? It sort of raises a question mark in my mind. Um, I don't know if it's too long of a strip that you think people are going to start driving fast. That, that would be my concern uh -huh. because then you're the, the entire stretch all the way down to Allen uh -huh. Street, there, there will be no stop signs whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree with that. I, I mean, I, I walk across that street as much as anybody to go to the wellness center and I I mean what Laura said that people are crossing at all different locations there isn't I do not believe everybody's is just like downtown we've got one crosswalk but everybody manages to cross wherever they want on Xenia Avenue and the same thing's going to happen on Livermore and it's mostly to the wellness center I mean that's where that's why there's such increased traffic now I guess I'm I'm you know, I probably don't care that much, um, but I. It don't definitely doesn't need to be at the other block. That's yeah, it sure. definitely right. doesn't need There's to be. There's nothing at the other happening. Block. Down yeah. There. yeah. I mean, I think back when the college was more populated, I think that was the argument for, for mm -hmm. why we had it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I like the idea of some traffic calming, on Livermore. Well, I so think Judy uses that street quite a bit. Uh, 
kind of yeah, like and I used to live on on Livermore Street and worked at the gym for many years. It it definitely becomes a, a sort of a speedway for folks who want to cut off Xenia Avenue and get to the other end of town quickly. So if you don't have something there to sort of slow the process, and people don't actually stop, they just kind of slow down and then keep going. But at least it at least it breaks up the foot to the floor. I, I would definitely say you need something at some point along that stretch. Oh, I, I definitely think there needs to be something. I don't know why that that particular at that particular area it just doesn't seem seem it see it still seems like it's going to be a little bit cumbersome um, to work with but I mean it's, I guess it makes more sense to put it where there are more people crossing there are certainly more people crossing there than there are up the street I absolutely agree that there needs to be at least one one sign one stop on Livermore I, I don't think it should be sought be open all the way through so I guess this makes as much sense as anything what about what about a yield sign so people have to slow down, but they don't get a ticket if they don't come to a complete <laughs> stop. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you what the issue is, I think, just from tra traversing it a lot. If you put the stop sign in, you force parking back away from the stop sign, which then opens up your field of vision. If you're coming down mm -hmm. the street, you can see much more clearly if there's someone starting to cut across. And now you really can't see, especially if it's a short person, <laughs> starting across, you literally can't see them until you're into your turn. and they're a fair number of kids that cross there so I think that it's I think it's going to be effective safety wise just for that reason it opens up your field of vision sounds good and I think I, you know I think another thing that's somewhat compelling is that is that Reggie Stratton who knows that campus inside and out thinks it's a good idea so that should probably be enough to make it happen um, at this point it is there will be two readings but is does anybody is isn't this the second? No, this is, no, first, this is the first okay. reading. Um, does anybody have any comments? Okay, um, bring it back to, back to council table. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. 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 Sims. Yes. Quintra. Yes. Uh, that's uh, twenty sixteen dash twenty six. You can just read that in by title only, Judy. <coughs> Which is. Just enough as it I is. I know it's a big huh. enough title. <laughs> this is adopting a statement indicating the services the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio will provide to the territory proposed to be annexed to the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, pursuant to a petition filed with the Board of County Commissioners of Greene County, Ohio, filed by the petitioner, Antioch College Corporation, for the annexation of 422.106 acres of land, more or less, in Miami Township, Greene County, Ohio, to the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, as provided by Ohio Revised Code, Section 709.023C. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Does Chris, Chris, do you want to explain this one? Sure. Uh, uh, there's a distinct process that uh, we've got to go through, and it all starts with Patty being made the petitioner's agent, and in this case for Antioch College. Um, uh, we've, the petition was filed. Uh, Judy took care of that today, so now we're in this process where multiple jurisdictions have to pass legislation within designated period of times. Uh, so this a piece of uh, legislation needs to be passed within 20 days of the filing of the petition, and then the next resolution that we're, you're going to take up pertaining to consenting to the annexation is something that needs to be done within 25 days. There's no reason to delay that process. In fact given that the, the short timelines, we need to condense that process to make sure that we don't have our own scheduling issues. Uh, so for example, the 20 days would not be met if we waited until I think the next uh, right. council meeting. So um, this is what we need to do to further the ball down the road and then we'll be um, working with the county and the township to make sure that the timing and all of that's okay. And and this particular resolution basically says that we are providing services. Correct. Right, it's, it's legally required, <coughs> as is the next resolution, uh, consenting to the annexation. So Chris, you're saying section one, for example, is legally required, we need all this language? Yes. And Patty, can we talk a little bit about the implications of this? I mean, I know, you know, we've said there's not going to be a need to, you know, uh, mm -hmm. extend certain services and whatnot. But, you know, as I read some of these details, I guess I'd like to just talk about that a little bit. 
Correct. And, and Nick and I have talked a little bit about this um, because it, it was a concern that was brought up originally. <coughs> I think it, Jerry brought it up. Um, mm -hmm. And the areas that um, are being annexed, there's, there's nothing in them um, that doesn't already have whatever services are necessary. Correct, Nick? Um, the Raptor Center and the, <coughs> the Educational Center out there already have the services that they need from us. And the rest of the ter territory that's being annexed in, there's, there's no development or buildings or anything that's coming in that are going to require the services. And there are no plans for that because it's all under conservation. What about recreation programming? You know, we didn't talk about that because the Glen handles it, and so uh, the wording is required by the state of Ohio. Could we technically be required to do that? Yes, um, but I, I, I guess we have to take the Glen's word okay. for it. That well, and the other part of that is is that I think that if there were, when I read that, I interpreted it to mean that that would be something that would be uh, be uh, monitored, supervised, and implemented through. Mm -hmm. Yellow Springs, the Villages Parks and Recreations Department, which I, clearly that's not what the intent would be, right. given the existence of the Glen Helen Association. Okay. Um, yeah, that one seems strange to me. I just didn't really understand why, but it has to be there. But it's it's annexation. I mean, it, <coughs> you just think I about this is this is an odd annexation. Usually, people annex municipal, you know, to get the, the same services, kind of yeah. the same kind of property that's already there. Right. This is a really unusual one that doesn't mean that they can change the language. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions from council? Nope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next is resolution 2016-27. And would you just go ahead and read that in full? Sure. <clears throat> this is supporting Glen Helen Association's application to Clean Ohio for funds to purchase a portion of the property known as the Sutton Farm. Whereas Council for the Village of Yellow Springs has received a request from the Glen Helen Association for support of their application to the State of Ohio Public Works Commission for purchase of approximately 75.89 acres of land located at 1130 State Route 343. And whereas Council has reviewed this request for support of the application and has determined that conservation of the eastern portion of the property is important to the long-range goals of the Village of Yellow Springs regarding protection of our water supply. And whereas the sale of this property to the Glen Helen Association would provide a buffer of land to the north of Glen Helen that would act as a buffer to waters, the waters of Birch Creek entering the North Glen, and whereas Council finds the request for real estate purchase acceptable for achieving the desired outcome of the conservation and improvement of the noted portion of the Sutton Farm property, and whereas Glen Helen Association wishes to participate and commits to finance no less than 75% of the purchase price. Now, therefore, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section 1, Council hereby supports the request for purchase of the eastern portion of Sutton Farm property by the Glen Helen Association, and in so doing, supports the application to Clean Ohio for funding of the purchase. Section 2, Council hereby certifies that conservation of the eastern portion of the Sutton Farm property is in accordance with village goals regarding protection of the village water supply and conservation of open space for the Village of Yellow Springs. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, this is reading it in full is pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. Nick, you're here. Did you want to say anything else? No, I didn't need to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, I'm thankful to you all for taking it up and um, would be happy to answer any questions if any come up. Patty, do you want to review, since you weren't here, I mean, I know that there were a couple of surprises for you when you got in the office. I, well, I think what happened was, I think you discussed that when I went to make copies for everybody and by the time I came back with the budget, you guys had already discussed the budget and then when I looked at it, I had questions. I think that's what happened. But um, this resolution is, is um, council's way of showing support for, for Nick and Glen Helen when they write their grant so that they have this to put in with the grant. And every little bit of support you can put in with those things is always a plus. So. Clean Ohio gives you points for uh, three different resolutions of support. So this is one piece of a larger uh, decision-making process for the council. Okay. I, I missed the meeting, but I, there was a financial 
uh, presented. Right, it should be in your in, package, yeah. And I believe Mary Ann had a question, and I also had one that the, the uh, actual amount that we receive is the uh, 205? 205. 205.5, about. That's a pretty right. close estimate, right? So, but in terms of the, the purchase of the land, and, and these other expenses right, which was to fall on, a, on the village? Which was actually the question that I had when I started looking at it. But uh, I think, Nick, do you want to address that? Um, uh, sure. Um, uh, do, you, do you have that budget worksheet yeah. available mm -hmm. in, in front here. of you? Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful. Do you need it? Um, um, no, I've got one here. Uh, so it, it, um, in, in simplest terms, um, what, what we tried to do is build a, a budget that includes uh, the, all the costs that are, are required for acquisition uh, and uh, the, uh, the costs that we can uh, reasonably estimate would be necessary to, uh, to do under the terms of the grant, so within the two-year window that we have the grant. Um, uh, adding to that the, the costs required by the Tecumseh Land Trust to manage the, the process of, of doing a new baseline uh, evaluation for the, um, uh, for the property and um, uh, a, a new uh, a stewardship fee because we're splitting up uh, what is now one easement uh, that they'll be monitoring into two. Um, and um, uh, plugging in all those costs, recognizing that um, uh, Clean Ohio is able to cover three quarters of the uh, of the overall costs. That's what that's what spits out the the number at the end of the process of what um, what the, uh, the the village would be able to to recoup from it. So, but um, I see on here that uh, there's three thousand to be dispersed for Ohio real estate, which we actually, I believe, already paid. So yes. that that will come back to the village as well. That's that's yeah. right. Well, the three quarters of, the, of that. Yeah. Right. And so, <clears throat> Clean Ohio, they consider the land value this total amount. Um, All the costs. So the, when I'm looking at the worksheet, I'm the, just wondering. They, they consider the land value, the appraised amount, uh -huh. uh, but then they consider uh, all of these other project costs to be uh, eligible for for the overall grant. Right. I mean, the only thing that's really different that we wouldn't all see on our own on the sale of our own house are the are the two bottom ones, the site improvements and the baseline documentation. All the others are the cost of real estate. Of selling real estate, sure. So, so it's really the it's the it's the bottom two that I would say are maybe a surprise to be part of this, and and maybe all of them are a surprise <laughs> that we as the seller we're going going to have to bear because typically those are costs that the well, that the buyer bears. I, I guess I, w I would say the the good news here is, is that Clean Ohio would be coming in with outside dollars to cover the, the majority of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, from, from the standpoint of, uh, of the village, this removes the obligation, if you will, of doing, doing that work um, ourselves, yourselves, um, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of fulfilling the management plan for the project. That shifts that burden. Uh, over the two-year grant window and and going forward to to the Glen Helen Association, right? Well, I think it's good to clarify not all of these costs, you know, fall on the village. Um, but this worksheet is mm -hmm. is this for us, or was that, or is this submitted with the grant? Or um, will will the uh, the grant has a uh, a format that's supplied by the state that that these numbers will be plugged into? So this was really for for us to go back and forth and and just make sure we got all of our numbers correct. And um, uh, at the at the end of the day, these figures will be plugged into into the the formal grant proposal. Right, because I guess you know when I look at it, the the donated land value. I mean, it, that I think is just kind of confusing here, because I mean that's, I mean that's not twenty five percent of the land value, right? It's twenty five percent of the project. That's but. right, and, and I I, uh, I I recognize that I may have used the term uh, twenty five percent of the land value in, in some prior conversations. It's twenty five percent of the eligible project right. costs. 
Any other questions or comments? Yeah, still, but uh, I heard what you said, Karen, that uh, these other co costs are normally assumed by the buyer, not the seller. Correct? If I understood mm -hmm. you correctly, your statement. But yeah. isn't it true that the, for the Clean Ohio money, that right. in fact is not the case that they require? Right. I mean, obviously. I mean, th this is what's required. This is this is what what we have to deal with. We we can't we can't negotiate this away. This is this is the deal, and this is what's required of Clean Ohio. I guess we can't we can't negotiate anything with Clean Ohio. The only thing we could negotiate would be with Glenn Helen. I think Glenn or Nick has told us that that there just isn't funding from the Glenn, whether it be the Glenn Helen Association or somebody else. So. So it's just an, an added amount on top of the, the 89, or the 89.5 is just an added amount that, that um, we're going to be basically donating, you know. It's, it seems to me that the local donation, basically it's a local donation, is, um, expresses the local community's support for, you know, supporting the mm -hmm. deal and thinking <coughs> it's good for the community. And so mm -hmm. coming up with some piece of the, uh, the cash. Well, yeah. we're, we're not coming up with the cash. We're just donating, you know. Right. Uh, well, it comes out of the selling prices. Right. Yeah. Is. So, so we're donating. So we are. We are donating. We're donating something to yeah. the project because we think it's a good project. I think that's what they require. Right. Some uh, buy-in by the local community. Correct. Yes. Well, yes. it's not what they require, but it well, does help with the score. And it's the only way to make this well, happen. Uh, let, let me say that um, uh, if I, if the Glen Helen Association was to pursue acquisition of a property that wasn't already protected, uh, wasn't under conservation easement, there would be uh, multiple sources that we might go to for uh, um, matching Clean Ohio funds. The Village of Yellow Springs Green Face Space Fund is right. is, is a, a source that that the land trust has used. To, to be the matching source for um, um, uh, for for grants uh, through the Clean Ohio Open Space Fund, because this property, if you will, is already protected. Uh, most public sources of funds are not interested in an additional outlay of resources. Uh, Clean Ohio is is a unique source because they they maintain interest in the property so long as it doesn't already have a a Clean Ohio easement on it, uh, and, and that allows us to bring public dollars to the village uh, for purposes of furthering the conservation on that property. I mean, I feel like the village is getting a, a good deal on this because we're not only getting better management of the property, you know, for uh, environmentally you know, a better managed uh, piece of land. Uh, we also get money. We get, we're going to get a fairly big chunk of money uh, uh, we're going to get paid for it. So I think that's something that, That's our goal here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I also support the project. Um, I, I, what's important to me is just that we accurately account for all of these things. Right. So. Mm -hmm. And again, I, you know, I don't know how, if there's a way to show this in the budget, Melissa, maybe that's not the proper venue to show it, but just to track um, what we're, I consider this an investment in green space. So just to, mm -hmm. to track that, you know, separate from the income we're getting, to track what we're actually donating. So um, any other discussion, any comments or questions from citizens? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed. Uh, resolution 2016-28, Judy, just what's on the agenda, if you have it. Do you have the agenda? I do. Um, hold on one second. I was going to... Because... Oh. So this is preliminary legislation authorizing the Ohio Department of Transportation funding for construction of sidewalks along Yellow Springs Fairfield Pike from Fair Acres Drive to Winter Street and along Winter Street from Pleasant to Yellow Springs Fairfield Pike. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Who's going to Patty, I guess this all came to you, maybe. But it's Melissa's project. So. Oh, Melissa, okay. <coughs> okay, basically this is a piece of legislation um, that's just a formality. 
um, in order to get this project started. Um, they, the um, consult, there have been two different consulting firms which we've contracted with in order to um, do the right-of-way acquisitions as well as the uh, appraisal reviews um, through Ohio Department of Transportation. So they began work. We had our kickoff meeting, uh, I believe, a week or so ago. So this is just a piece of legislation in order to get that project uh, moving forward finally. So looking forward to getting that, getting that moving. Kids. Can you describe a little more exactly what's, you know, what's entailed? Because I don't think I've ever heard the description of this project. It's going to be um, putting in sidewalks on the streets um, that are listed here. So it's going to be Yellow Springs, Fairfield, Pike from Fair Acres to Winter Street, and then along Winter Street from Pleasant to Yellow Springs, Fairfield. So it's installing sidewalks. And is it, which side of the, so is it on this, coming from Fair Acres? South side. Yeah, south side. Across from Fair Acres. Okay, so it'll be across a crossing, and then it'll be on the other side, and then take a right on Winter. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, yes. Right on Winter Street, and then it yeah, it, and then it goes takes a right on Pleasant. Oh wait, it ends at Pleasant. Yeah, because we have si oh, the sidewalk Pleasant. picks up okay. from there on out. Okay. And we still the village is still doing Stafford we down are. to Fair Acres. We are. Okay. Um. So one thing I wanted to, uh, I called Ben Miller today mm -hmm. because I was confused about this letter where I did not understand what, you know, uh, second quarter fiscal year 2017 meant mm -hmm. um, because the state's fiscal year is July to June. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess what I learned, and, and you probably already knew this, is that this project um, right now is not scheduled to start until uh, 2018. It is, but um, if we were able to get things moving along quicker, then it could be pushed forward. Okay, good. And so that was, sooner. and that's actually what I wanted. That was the upshot of my conversation too. Was, you know, he said that they encourage municipalities to beat the timeline, mm -hmm. and that we could potentially talk to the woman in charge of the funds. Um, so I, I would love to see this go in at least by next summer, so that we could start the school year. And the timeline that they've given us, I mean, we've been meeting the deadline, so um, cool. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that that would be How long the case. do you think the right-of-way acquisition is going to take? Um, I think that it, it could take until November. Mm. Okay. And then, so then you're, you're, we're looking at potentially, you know, this would certainly be a, a spring-summer project, so we'd be looking at maybe spring or summer of 2017. Would that be the goal? If we're lucky, I need to get. I, I don't have the timeline it right was, in front of it me, was, but I know that. And the what right time? Line, and yeah. what? Uh, what's the length of construction? Are they asked? Do they have an estimated length of construction? It wasn't very long. Mm -hmm. It was like two or three months yeah. tops. I mean, it, it's a <coughs> summer project. Okay. So the, our goal was to try to get everything done by this winter, and as soon as the weather breaks in the spring, to try to get them to start the construction okay. instead of waiting until the fall. Good. Do the do the homeowners along there know about this project? Have they, they will. Been, they, when um, they're doing the right of way acquisition. Well, yeah. they they know about the project because ODOT's been out there doing surveying, and, okay. and some of them I know have talked to ODOT and, and have sent mm -hmm. emails of concern about certain things that ODOT has handled very well before Melissa took over the project. But mm -hmm. um, they are aware of it. Yes. Okay. In in the piece that that we're going to add, do we have to wait? for them to do the, their portion before we do Well, we were going to do it all at the same time because we'll probably just hire their contractor okay. on our dime to do it while they're out there and mobilized. Gotcha. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to speak for you. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't just about that. Just to say, I mean, it seems like a really needed piece mm -hmm. of sidewalk, so oh, I yeah. think mm -hmm. it's great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, it was actually a project that started before I even came on board, and then when Melissa um, became AVM, she... Yeah. Um, she took it over and has been doing a great job with it. Yeah, I so. think it started in 2012. It's Chris, been Chris being talked us. about for a long time, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but it didn't right. seem like it was kind of getting any legs under it. And uh, but that whole neighborhood up there, you know, getting across that busy street. It's, oh yeah, and there, we yeah, have so many it's kids been, in yeah, the Fair Acres it's, neighborhood. Uh, yeah, it seems like a many more children than there used to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, I uh, greatly appreciate you pushing this. Yeah. Um, because from talking to them, it seemed like it was possible to get this done, you know. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> so, and, uh, and if it helps to have, you know, other people calling to uh, put pressure. Yes, I know how much 
staff likes when we talk to ODOT and other people. <laughs> Why? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. I'm not going to comment. Le so, I'm not going to Best comment. left on Santa. Yeah. Um, so, I guess we need to, any other discussion? Any discussion, comments from citizens? Chris? I'd just like to say thank you. This is something very important to me and friends of mine on, along the route, and uh, I know it's been a lot of work, so much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, and finally we have, do we have, wait, a reminder, um, resolution 2016-19, and would you read the, 29, dash 29, sorry. Title only? Yeah, that's fine, yes. as long as it's the title that's on the legislation, yeah. Yes, this is consenting to the annexation of 422.106 acres of land, more or less, located in Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, to the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, pursuant to a petition filed with the Green County Board of Commissioners, Green County, Ohio, as provided by Ohio Revised Code Section 709.023C. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So move. Second. Okay. Um, so my understanding of this one, Chris, is that this is basically telling the, co the county commissioners that we consent to this annexation? Correct. So it's not just that we agree to give services, that to provide services, it's just one extra step of consenting? Correct. Okay. And do we know when this is going before the county commissioners? I have my notes somewhere. Um, do you know, Nick? Because I feel like somebody should be there. I know that they like well, to have people there. They have to know. They have to notify me as the petitioner. Okay. So, and and I, it wouldn't hurt to have multiple people there because they love to see people coming <laughs> to their meetings. So, if I could go, yeah, I, I I believe it's not less than thirty days and not more than ninety days or something like that. I'm not it depends positive. on the timing of all the other people. Right. Okay. Um, okay, any other questions or comments from council or citizens? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, one more thing before we go on to citizens' concerns. Uh, Patty just remind, reminded me that um, there is a groundbreaking for Home Inc. on Thursday. This is for the final two C Street uh, houses. It's from noon to two. and. Uh, um, Everybody's invited. Next is the time on the agenda to hear from citizens about items that are not on the agenda. You have three minutes. We ask that you come to the podium and state your name, and we will track your time. Anything? Okay. Seeing and hearing none, we will come back to council table. We do not have special reports or old business. So we'll move to new business, which is um, the letter that was received from the um, Active, Active, Active Transportation, Transportation Committee. Committee. Yes, A Active Transportation Committee related to, um, at this point, part of it is some of the ongoing um, road work that's happening on um, Xenia Avenue and was happening on Dayton Street, some of the repaving, and also um, some opportunities um, that we will have when Xenia Avenue is repaved. So. I think I'll just turn it over to either Marsha or Chris. Thank you. I'm assuming you don't want me to read. <laughs> don't, <letter>. please don't. <laughs> we trust that you know how. The basic gist of it is um, the uh, Yellow Springs Active Transportation Committee has been meeting for almost two years now to talk about different mobility and access concerns that would affect anybody in the village um, of all ages and abilities, um, including the folks that I, I heard opened up your meeting today. Mm -hmm. um, so I was very glad to see them uh, on the agenda and said we should have teamed up for this presentation. Um, anyways, we, we know there's a lot of capital projects every season. We know there's a big one coming this summer, uh, the mill and fill of Route 68 through town, all the way from Xenia to Springfield. <clears throat> and we wanted to start by saying thank you to the village and to Jason Hamby uh, for coordinating the project mm -hmm. and for listening to our concerns um, and, and hearing us out on our recommendations on uh, projects large and small. Um, so we met with Jason as a group um, earlier 
uh, because it was last week now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we understand that there will be continental crosswalks, which is a nice upgrade to the crosswalks that are out there today um, on Xenia Avenue at Limestone, at Short, and at Quarry Streets. Um, so we're pleased with that. Uh, and Chris, will you just describe what that means? <clears throat> a continental crosswalk is a, uh, they're sometimes referred to as the piano keys. Instead of two small stripes perpendicular to the road, mm -hmm. they are a series of very thick stripes parallel to the road that leave space for tires to go through, uh, but they're also much more visible because they're broader, so a car can see them from much further back. It really is a much clearer demarcation of the crossing zone for pedestrians. And those three crossings I named are clearly some of the more, most heavily um, trafficked crossings uh, by pedestrians and cyclists and people in wheelchairs um, in our village. So one of the things we ask is that the, uh, the village council um, work with ODOT and, and the village uh, staff to uh, extend that by at least one intersection to the, uh, the bike path crossing. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding from our meeting um, is that the, the bike route is actually a state facility, as is obviously Route 68. So it, it's a practical thing for them to be addressing that crossing as well at this mm -hmm. time. Um, we would hope that ODOT would do that at its cost, but I understand that there are change orders at this point, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure what our negotiating position is. So that's just something we're putting out there. Um, at the same time, we do recognize that uh, the village, at its cost, is doing continental striping <coughs> at at least one of the intersections of Dayton Street, which mm -hmm. has recently resurfaced. So um, thank you for that. Um, and uh, let's see. Next up, we, we talked with Jason about bicycle facilities on Route 68. Um, it's funny, when I mentioned that I was coming to this meeting tonight um, to a number of my friends, <clears throat> they said, oh, you're going to talk about bike lanes. And I'm said, no, we're not going to talk about bike lanes at this point. Um, we understand that's a bigger endeavor that we can talk about down the road. But in the interim, we, we think a, uh, a very um, uh, a good starting point would be Sharrows, which are share the road markings um, on a section of 68 that runs through downtown, <clears throat> really where the pinch points come in of the on-street parking, forcing any cyclist who would maybe be t uh, taking to the curb, um, for example, from South College to um, Davis, uh, that curb lane becomes a parking lane very quickly, and the car or the uh, sorry cyclist is by law allowed to take the lane, but may feel uncomfortable doing so, and may end up with conflict with a with a driver who doesn't understand the law. So a uh, share the road marking is a very bold symbol in the in paint on the surface that can be applied uh, with a stencil after the fact, and is usually accompanied by uh, roadside signage, which we do already have in the village. So um, our request to the village is to either work with ODOT to coordinate that as part of the project or to complete that portion of the work after the project. Um, we think that would add visibility for cyclists, which we know are very many of us in the village, and especially downtown where it gets crowded. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, beyond that, we are asking that the village um, and hopefully work with us to explore the possibilities uh, when the parking lanes are restriped downtown, of uh, potentially adding a space uh, or, or dedicating an on-street parking space for bicycle parking. Um, this is not something that has to be a permanent fixture um, that, has, that is immovable. Um, it can be something we leave space for and follow through on at a later date, uh, but we would like to start the conversation, actually renew the conversation, because we know this has been um, a topic over the years, and we know it would take coordination with the business owners, um, with various residents who uh, have expressed interest in this. But we think it would not only um, provide an amenity and a safe bicycle parking space for many of our cyclists who visit downtown, uh, locals and tourists, um, but it also sends the right message about what kind of place we are. And we're not requiring you to lock up to a tree or a, or a railing. We have space for you. Um, that's all I have right now. I thank you for your time. Any questions for me or Marcia? Sometimes I just wanted you. to uh, <coughs> quickly share. Um, you have to come up here, Marsha. Come on, we need to see you. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to quickly share. Is there anybody at council table who is not familiar with what the Sharrows <coughs> symbol looks like? Have you all you've all seen that? Mm -hmm. But I was up in um, Springfield the other evening. I'm back and forth from Springfield a lot um, in this one section of town, and I do believe they might have very recently. Um, put down some new sharrows because I went the route I always go, so I was rather absent-minded. And suddenly I'm like, oh, 
there's a Shero. And I don't, we don't, I don't see them very often, you know, quite honestly. I, mean, I don't know that's because I don't get out very often or what. But um, the point I'm making is that it was so effective, you know, and I'm somebody, you know, who's very much, um, you know, that's my mindset, you know, are cyclists and, and biking. Um, so I just want to, you know, share that, that I found being the motors, being in the car, and not, you know, at all expecting to see that share on the road, it really caught my attention. And um, so I just thank you for that consideration. Um, and we look forward to moving this, moving this forward. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, Patty, Brian and I have been meeting with these folks, and, and Jason met with us right. last week. And, and so, you know, as, as Chris said, I mean, we know that there are some budget limitations, and we know at least the projects has al have already been let without these accommodations. Um, that's true, but I, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not so much concerned about the, the, the budget constraints on it as I am talking ODOT into allowing us to do the, like the bicycle parking in some of the parking spaces downtown. Brian and I were talking a little bit about this before the meeting and we have asked them before to allow us to do that and they've, they've not been very um, cooperative or, or, you know, they, they basically told us no because it's a state route. So, but we will keep revisiting that with them and, and um, Brian and I talked a little bit about, you know, maybe laying the parking spaces out in, in a different manner so that we could maybe come up with some of those spaces. Yeah. And um, I haven't had a chance to talk with Jason since he met with you, I think was last Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully I'll get a chance to talk to him about that okay. um, this week. Yeah, that, I appreciate that. We we're really asking at this point to have the conversation, um, mm -hmm. recognize that an ODOT might say no right. immediately. Yeah. Um, but we also, as a citizen group, are happy to offer support. I can think of several examples of state routes that have on-street bicycle parking, and, and we'll share those with you. We yeah. won't go to ODOT directly. <laughs> yeah, and that and that might be very helpful okay. because a lot of times, if it's in a different district, sure, um, and they don't really talk to each other, that might be very helpful. That might be what gets us right. the 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 yes answer instead of the no. So, if you want to go ahead and send those to me, yep. I, that would be great. And I think something that we we also decided because. It, my understanding is that the, the parking, striping the parking spaces is going to be a separate contract. That's going to be handled separately from I, I the crosswalks. Th I thought ODOT was going to do it, but Brian tells me he doesn't think that yeah, that's Jason, what Jason said. Yeah, Jason said he was getting it done separately, okay. that that was going to be our work. And then, so what we're thinking is that some of this, like the Shero addition, that that right. could be part of that contract. Right. not trying to add work to ODOT's contract well, at this right. point. Right, no, it's, that's why I'm saying I don't, I don't see it so much as a budget constraint as a, as a getting ODOT to cooperate kind of issue. Right. Um, will, they, will they object to the Sharrows? They, they actually did object to our share of the road signs that are, I think there's one down by the dollar store and a, a couple of others coming in that way, and they, they actually objected to those. And, hmm. When? Uh, last year. And I mean, still there. So I do feel like I've heard that that they that Sharrows are not working. That Sharrows are not are not preferred. And I, you know, maybe that is something. If that's something that that Matt Lindsay or somebody at MVRPC could be asked. You know, I'm I'm more than willing to support. You know, what makes sense. Um, and again, I mean, it's probably not. It's not a lot of expense at all to right. paint those onto the. Well, we talked about the Springfield example, but. Weren't you also, also talking about in Cleveland that they recently? Yeah, ODOT did a project that wrapped up uh, last fall. It's a state route, um, okay. very busy street, and it's they did some very nice sharrows with thermoplastic, um, and then actually some of them were damaged by snow plows in the winter, and they came back out and fixed them. So when you if you go when you go back up there because you go regularly, if you if you could take some pictures and send those to me, that would be very helpful. Sure. So yeah, what it, who's when you say they're not working is there it's, some it's traffic that, that, thing that, that people that that drivers don't understand what they are mm -hmm. and that and that it's just causes confusion i'm i'm trying to look it up now to see what I, it's just something that i i thought i had heard bikeways and pedestrians i don't know that i'll be able to share the road okay there are some cyclist activists who think they're not effective enough maybe that's it but to, to me um, I feel like that's better <laughs> than having rather, nothing 
what were, what would the next step? A dedicated be? facilities, but in oh. many cases you don't have the right of way width to do that. It would require taking out a parking lane, and we're not proposing that at all. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm very surprised to hear that ODOT would object to a roadside communication of the law. Um, <coughs> that seems kind of backwards, but. Uh, again, if, if there's any way we can provide help with um, any sort of background documentation, research, um, any of the specs that you need to, um, and we can even try to find somebody who has the stencil if we need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess one other thing I want to clarify about the parking. Um, from my view, I don't think this requires losing any parking spots downtown. Right. Right. I, I mean, what I would be advocating for is is a reallocation of space. Right. right. So. And and clearly, for um, things like street fair and the Fourth of July parade and um, clearing this clearing the street of snow, they would have to be some kind of temporary something. I mean, we were talking right. about how they could be installed with sleeves that would be relatively easy to pick up. Which in. which was one of ODOT's. Uh, objections is that they don't want any kind of permanent thing in the road and then we said well we'll just put a bike rack there for the summer and then we'll move it and there be so we wanted to put one in, and I was telling Brian in front of the little art between the two crosswalks and um, they they wouldn't go for it so but we'll keep at them I mean it's not you know you never give up so so I, it sounds like you're hearing support from council for for yeah, these I think ideas, they're, they're and, ideas I think. and it sounds like staffs on on board also mm -hmm. so yeah. great all right thanks again thanks, thanks. Chris you. thanks Marcia yeah, yeah. good to see you at a council meeting any other comments about um, bike lanes anything bicycle Deward <coughs> I'd like to uh, speak in support of anything that we can do as a village to promote bicycling. I know we've got a lot of intrepid people that, that bike in town, but I also have a lot of conversations with people who <coughs> don't bike in town because they don't feel safe on our roads because we don't have um, dedicated bike lanes or because 68 is a really tricky place to bike. The reason that I'm speaking in support of it is bike uh, cycling is the most efficient uh, form of transportation from a greenhouse gas emissions perspective and most trips that people take in town are ones that people can ride their bikes so anything we can do um, to encourage people to ride their bikes is good for our environment and good for what we're trying to do to fight cl climate change so. great thanks thank you. Thanks. thanks me and patty talked a little while back and so forth but but i think another area that the committee needs to look at is the uh, West South College from Xenia Avenue up to the high school mm -hmm. and uh, there was a bike path that's been right. mm -hmm. uh, somewhat ab abandoned and me and Patty talked about how it could be possibly be, be widened and so forth right. uh, and be a dedicated mm -hmm. uh, bike lane for our kids because we're I, I live in that area and I'm seeing more and more of our students now either riding bikes or skateboarding uh, to school and and it's uh, in the mornings and, and in the evenings it's it's very hazardous mm -hmm. so and it's probably it doesn't need to be re I don't know if it needs if it's known or it's, if it's been discussed but on the new safe routes to school on those new crosswalks I assume those will be continental I'm not sure if they are or not uh, they probably aren't at this point because the design's not done, but we can certainly ask. I them. mean, it seems to me maybe that becomes a standard that is anything related to schools. I don't know that they need to be everywhere, but. Um, well, especially that crosswalk from Fair Acres. Across yeah. Fairfield. Right, right, that goes across Fairfield. That, that needs, yeah. Um, in regards to what Jerry said about uh, the old bike path. Um, on his street, there's also the old bike path on Dayton Street. Is, mm -hmm. is there, are there any mm -hmm. other ones? It's just those two. Um, I mean, they're still useful even in the condition that they're in. So yeah, if there was anything to, I mean, Dayton Street could be included in. They're, they are used and for younger, for younger uh, people being there rather than on Dayton Street, certainly a lot yeah. safer. Mm -hmm. I think there's actually, uh, there is a, an actually a designed plan 
um, for Dayton Street after it widens out that has bike lanes on the side of the road. Um, I believe it's on the north side of Dayton Street. I believe there's a bike lane, a plan with a bike lane. Have you seen that, Chris? It's an old plan. Marcia would probably be more aware of that. It's, it's, a, it's an old plan, but it's yeah, there, it's right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Although sometimes I find when you make those transitions, it's, it can be more dangerous. When you, when, you, when you have a pinch point, as Chris said before, mm -hmm. that, and you're, then you're, you're not in traffic, then all of a sudden you have to get in traffic. Right. That can actually be more dangerous right. than but the but the, riding in traffic. But the bike path on the side of the road ends there anyway because it does it, okay. yeah, it becomes just a sidewalk after after Stafford, I think. It's just a sidewalk because mm -hmm. I used to walk that way when I lived in the apartment. So okay. yep. but. good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Chris and, and Marcia for being here. Uh, manager report. <clears throat> okay, uh, obviously phase three of streetscape is, is moving right along and, and they're pretty much on schedule. Um, the, they are going to be installing those new access ramps um, over on Walnut Street before they leave town. And then after street fair, they're actually going to come back and we're going um, we're going to finish up the part uh, there between Quarry and the bike, the bike path in front of Peaches and Ha Ha and, and Dragon Tree. So um, that will actually finish all of that up. Um, he can't, he has to move on to another project because we kind of added that. So he's gonna come back later and do that. Um, the homing groundbreaking, uh, as Karen said, is scheduled for Thursday at noon. Um, we are gonna be installing some new no trespassing signs down at the water plant in preparation for the upcoming construction. Um, because we just, number one, we, we have too many people back there walking around who really shouldn't be back there walking around. And we certainly don't want them back there uh, when we have construction going on and equipment and materials and excavations and all of that. So um, we are going to put those up. And once we put them up, then the, the PD will be patrolling down there. They'll be issuing warnings to people um, and explaining to them why they can't be back there. Um, we have several people who go back and walk their dogs, hunt mushrooms, and, and they're, most of them aren't village residents. But um, there will be a, a six month period or whatever where we issue warnings before any true enforcement action is taken. And that should put us right about the time we start digging and excavating and things where it truly starts to get a little dangerous. So um, we just want to put that out there. We're asking people to please understand that, that we're responsible for keeping that, that well filled and the plant secure and uh, keeping the construction site secure as well. So um, in an effort to expand the number of available parking spaces uh, in the village, we are going to be doing some uh, things over at uh, 102 Dayton Street. We're going to be removing a few of the trees and cleaning out that, that back area um, to create some more parking space. We'll be leaving buffer trees along Railroad Street and then down the, the north side of the parking lot to kind of buffer it from the residential neighborhood. Um, but we'll clean out there. There are a couple of dead scrub trees in the middle there that we're going to be taking out and cleaning that out so that folks can park back there and make a little more parking. Um, the other thing I have is a little bit more complicated. Um, if you uh, looked at my additional report on the solar array project, we have run into a couple of snags with the current company. Uh, and just to make a long story short, um, unless council has any questions about my report, I think I explained it uh, pretty clearly. Um, Atlas. Uh, offered to let us out of our letter of intent, which was due to expire on June the 23rd. Um, after consulting with Chris, Johnny Burns, John Courtney, and Greg Ottinger, who is our um, energy uh, attorney, um, I went ahead and accepted Atlas's offer to um, back out of that, that letter of intent on that solar array. That said, um, I spoke with Judith and today I spoke with Rick Walkey and we all agree that we should immediately move forward with AEP um, which was the 
the number two ranked firm <coughs> by the Internet Board. Um, the big difference between Atlas and AEP is that AEP is their own financial backer. So there will be no question of who is going to finance this project because they are a global corporation. So um, their price is slightly higher at 10.4 cents per kilowatt hour. It does have a 2% annual es escalator, but it's still lower than the other projects and they are their own back financial backer, which are two big selling points. So I guess I'm asking councils Approval to move <laughs> forward with AEP. Judith, did you want to? Nope. I think the, uh, the Energy Board's interested just to in seeing the project go forward as soon as possible. What so. does this do to any time frame? To if we can move forward with AEP and, and get the PPA done, they can still have it done this year. I mean, it's not. And have you reached out to them already? I have not. I was waiting for council tonight. This just all happened. Um, Last week, yeah. Last week. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I, everybody in the green. Yes. Okay. All right. We Melissa, assistant manager report. Um, the only item I had in uh, the packet was something that we'd already discussed with Safe Routes to School, so that's it for me. Okay, okay. thank you. And Miss Clark. Mostly just that we've been in high gear, a lot of meetings going on, and I just wanted to comment that uh, Planning Commission and BZA are just fantastic groups to work with. It, a lot is getting done these days, and Denise has been doing an outstanding job um, preparing materials and getting those meetings moving fast and getting a lot done. So I appreciate that very much. Very good. Um, I, I want to appreciate, Judy, your role in uh, working with the y young people with, you know, their request regarding. Thank yeah, you. I thought that was great. Thanks. Uh, board and Commission reports. Jerry. Uh, as Judy said, we've been, been busy. <laughs> um, but uh, if I'm correct, we should have some legislation for the uh, uh, first of June. Uh, it will be the second. second meeting because you do have yeah. the, the public hearing is coming right. up June right. 10th. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, an all, it's an all new group, basically, but, but they've been doing a magnific magnificent job going through the, what is written, looking for changes, and, 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 and actually going out and looking at areas where uh, folks will potentially be coming to the Planning Commission. So it's a, it's a great group. Great. Um, we had the financials. Yeah, you, had, so you had the financials. So. Uh, Brian? Yeah, so uh, Community Resources has not been meeting to my knowledge, um, and Community Access Panel is on hiatus. Uh, Arts and Culture Commission, um, a lot of things being implemented in terms of the policies and procedures for um, the Bryan Center Gallery, uh, looking at ways to promote the Village Inspiration and Design Award, and we are taking nominations now for the Summer Vita. And um, otherwise, uh, the group's now starting to look at um, uh, additional funding sources to support public art in the village. And we also are looking at the, sign, the new sign um, yes. project that you guys had asked about. So we'll have something on that uh, next month. Excellent. And um, I'll let Karen talk about the Economic Sustainability Commission because I was away for work. Oh. Um, let's see. Um, we just keep moving along on the goals, talking about the uh, um, I'm going blank on this. Um, the uh, um, incentive policy. Incentive, uh, talking about the incentive policy and uh, talking a little bit about um, what we would like to see in a website and um, putting together, talking also about how we want to move forward and, and where we might find potential funding sources uh, to add to the economic development revolving loan fund. Um, Judith? Um, well, the Library Commission did not meet this month. Um, 
Energy Board, I, I, I missed the meeting because I, well, for a variety of reasons, but, um, but the, um, I want to report on the Justice System Task Force. Just uh, we're getting a lot of, there's been a lot of interest. Um, Mary Ann is away right now, so we're going to try to start. I've got some times, hopefully, uh, the last week of the month, we're going to be able to start meeting with people. Um, we've made contacts with the high school, uh, with the Antioch College, and because um, we wanted some, you know, uh, participation of, of youth and uh, for them to be a part of the process. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great, I think it's going to be a great committee. I think our problem is going to be an abundance of good applicants. Mm. <laughs> but don't, don't forget, because I've actually talked to somebody about that. Don't forget, as in, you know, they're all public meetings. Yes. You could encourage people yeah, to I was, come to the meetings to, right. you know, maybe there are particular ex officio members that, that have some sort of connection that could be officially on the committee but not voting members? I mean, there's going to be, you know, research that people are going to be doing, and I was thinking, um, you know, that if there's a couple of committee members who are working on a particular area that they're, you know, exploring, you know, that they could include, you know, citizen, you know, a citizen, you know, working with them potentially, because I think there's going to be a fair amount of work. So I agree with you totally. Yeah. We're going to, I feel like, you know, people who are very interested, even if they don't end up on the committee, we're going to encourage them to participate. Mm -hmm. And this may be one that Judy and Chris, we need to um, have, have extra consideration to how we deal with Sunshine Law, just because there may be a lot of moving parts and pieces um, that might complicate things if there are subcommittees and things. Um, I was thinking less subcommittees than, you know, maybe group of Just two groups. And actually, and, and if there aren't people, if there are people off the commission, then that actually makes it easier. Right. right. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Mary Ann isn't here. Does anybody have anything that I, needs to be announced? Well, I, I, I wanted to ask oh. something about energy board is, is your... Yes. Okay. I, I was confused about in, in the minutes from January a reference to a three thousand supplemental appropriation. Yeah, that was when they were talking about asking council for a, a budget. For okay, the but th but that had not happened, right? No, okay. because council hasn't done any supplemental appropriations. Okay, and so I, they haven't they haven't followed through on it. Okay, it, it was just kind of confusing because I didn't remember that ever coming. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say something about uh, HRC. Uh, Marianne and I have <coughs> interviewed two folks. <coughs> excuse me for uh, potentially three spots if we include full members and alternates um, and we are waiting for a couple more weeks because I know there's an ad in the paper is that correct Judy uh, I'm not sure if it's I, still running okay um, but we wanted to make sure that anybody that was interested had a chance um, but we will be bringing uh, some nominations to a meeting in June so I just wanted to get that out there that it's still possible to uh, apply for a spot well, I guess I want to say the same for the Justice System Task Force, although we're getting lots of great applicants. You know, we're, I'm not trying to uh, discourage anybody else who's interested uh, to apply. Great. Um, Green County Regional Planning Commission, um, at our last meeting, we actually, we had two applications from Xenia Township, one for a project at um, Central State and another for a project over um, along Yellow or along um, Dayton Xenia Road, almost in the Xenia, um, almost into Xenia, and both of them we actually sent back to the um, township to the originators, suggesting that they have um, they collaborate with adjoining townships and communities, um, which actually I think is a really good outcome because both of these projects would have would have impacted the neighbors in a way that that I don't think they were thinking about so um, that's actually something I think regional planning should be doing is is um, encouraging collaboration um, MVRPC um, we had a very quick meeting um, there wasn't um, the minutes are in the um, are in the packet I don't think that there was much of note there uh, the chamber we do have our um, business after hours this Thursday um, at Mills Park Hotel from 5.30 to 
And I think that's about it. Uh, Street Fair is coming up on June 11th, so um, in case anybody has forgotten. Um, we don't have an executive session, uh, future agenda items. So we've got uh, the second reading of 2610. It looks like that's already on there. Um, do we have, I mean, I don't think anything came up tonight at all that we need to. One thing I wondered is uh, we had started that discussion about, you know, when we sell land, what we, where the proceeds go. And right. I didn't remember how, I think we were waiting for Patty to come back. Right. Well, Jerry yeah. and I are working. Go ahead, yeah. Jerry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah me and Patty, I met, uh, we uh, have lit, got a list of all the properties. Mm -hmm. Uh, back to Bill Jones. Uh, we've got a map of where the property is located. Uh, what we're, we're trying to do now is on those properties, try to determine and see if we can find documentation as to how oh, they the became right. uh, part of the village. You know. right. Oh, great. And, uh, yeah, we have the property, <coughs> the location, and the acreage. And, and the acre, yeah, the acreage, acreage too. Mm -hmm. so, and so we're just now we're trying to come up with if we can find the original reason that the, it was bought. And I, I immediately thought of Betty Ford. And I asked Betty Ford, and she referred us to another lady that Jerry is trying to get yeah. in touch with. And uh, the, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, and you know, once we do that, I think we'll also be coming back to council with some recommendations <coughs> on some of the properties and what we might, might do with them. Yeah, some suggestions. S suggestions. Yeah. yeah. So is that for the next meeting? Or? Uh, it depends on when we can get in right. touch with this lady that okay. we believe has the historical knowledge that we're looking for. Can I would also like, um, and since Marianne's not here, I can maybe volunteer her. But I think it would be good to. Uh, get kind of an update and talk a little bit more about what's happening with the glass farm. Um, I mean, I know we're, we're maybe not ready for a master plan, but some things that have come up about, um, you know, rights of ways and, and thinking about as that land does get developed, where roads would go, where bike paths could go and that sort of thing. And, and I wonder if we could. Well, I had, I had actually asked, um, Judith and Marianne to to hold off on that until we finish some of the other projects so that we could devote more staff time to it um, so we were trying to get through streetscape and the solar array which is now a little bit later than right I, I mean I, I'm not necessarily suggesting we go in depth but I, I guess I just want to start to understand how all these parts are going to fit together okay um, so I, it doesn't mean that we have to get in depth but it would give Marianne maybe an opportunity to report about how the wetland project's going um, and that Queen Ohio grant. And then, you know, just starting to look at how this is all going to work together. Okay. Oh, there it is. Here's the map that Jerry and I started with. Oh, oh good. That Jason okay. gave us. And, Great. and, and we, that's how we started. And then I put it into table form. And okay. Cool. So the next meeting is actually June 6th. Yes. Um, so, and then we'll have two meetings that week because we have, so June 6th is the regular council meeting. If we keep it short, that won't hurt my feelings since we're getting together again on June 8th. <laughs> um, that will be in A and B. We decided, right? On the 8th, right. On the 8th, June 8th will be in A and B. Yeah. Special meeting of council. Uh, it will be a work session uh, to discuss municipal fiber. Folks from um, SpringsNet will be here with information. We presented them with an agenda and lots of questions, so they will be here to um, fill us in on that information. Um, the next meeting is June 20th. At this point, we have nothing on the agenda. I'm sure we will by that time. And then July 5th, um, one item we have is the tax budget. Um, you know, another agenda item that, that uh, came out of um, the retreat was to talk about um, um, fund or funding of commissions um, and how we approach special events and um, mm -hmm. village funding of special events. So at some point, we need to take that up. Um, um, and so I'm not sure who's going to take the lead on that one. Um, the, I know Ruth Ann was trying to gather some more information that council had asked for on that, so let me um, 
let me check with her and see where she stands on that. Okay. And then. So it looks like we're done. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all. Nice meeting.